So I know I was talking about business earlier and how the carriers need to make more money and how the ecosystem needs to, you know, the business model is fundamentally broken. And so um, I haven't, I've kind of left money and I haven't talked about it for a while. This is how a lot of the people in the industry are currently approaching monetization of network services. They're charging per call, right? Four and a half cents a call for location, three and a half cents a call for SMS is what the rates are for the current uh, one API pilot in Canada. So for an application, let's say I have an application that's an online dating application, and I have, I don't know, a million users, and I send 300,000 SMSs a day saying, hey, someone thinks you're really hot, and they want you to you know, get down with them. And so I send out these SMSs, and users go in there, and they go into my app, and I get 500,000 know, uses of my app a day out of my million user base, which is like fantastically unrealistic. But for example, let's take this for granted, and I have an ECPM of $2, right? That means I generate $1,000 in revenue every day. It costs me $10,500 in SMS costs every day, right? So I lose almost $10,000 every day just being a successful app, right? Uh, this is kind of BS, right? I mean, it's basically a way for the carriers to put a toll booth up in front of the entire network. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no quicker way to be a dumb pipe than to, you know, charge people for how much they put through the pipe, right? It doesn't make any sense. And I think it really kills innovation where innovation occurs at the long tail. So, okay, uh, I, I like chocolate. Chocolate's kind of bitter, though. I mean, I like it. I'll still eat it, clearly. But it's a little bit bitter, right? And I like to sometimes cut it with some peanut butter so that it's not so harsh. So chocolate and peanut butter go really well together for me. Uh, I also think that, um, you know, mayonnaise and french fries, uh, a, a European company, believe it, it's good, live it. Uh, I know we don't know that here, but it's good, it really is. Um, I mean, fat plus fat, I mean, come on. Uh, whipped cream doesn't taste like anything, strawberries are really tart, but all of a sudden you mix them together, it's a delicious little food experiment in my mouth that I enjoy, right? And I think the same thing holds true for SMS and advertising, right? I mean, if I have an application like the dating application I mentioned before, I think that a network API and a third party API go really well together. I think also something like location and billing. For example, if I have, um, if I'm doing a sales for tickets to get into an event and someone walks up in front of the line, they give me their subscriber number, I build their cell phone, and I happen to know that it's them holding the cell phone right there at that spot, right? Kind of cool. So, the different business model that we're trying to push and that we're trying to introduce to the industry is a revenue share business model where if developers choose to use these bundled APIs together, instead of charging developers for SMS, we're letting carriers take part in the wealth of the advertising revenue. So basically, if you as an app developer find value in the network API, so much value that you make money doing so, then the carriers make money when you do, right? So that's kind of what we're trying to experiment with a little bit right now. Uh, if you look at the same example, revenue thousand dollars a day, you lose three hundred to revenue share with the carriers. Now this application is profitable, right? It's a really simple example, but we're thinking that the model proves out nicely. So this, um, pardon the total blatant metaphor, uh, we're just at the beginning of this, and it's really, really hard to do because, I mean, you have to engineer the products that expose the APIs, you have to deploy them to carriers. You've got to convince the carriers that it's in their best interest to open them up to the general public. It's a very difficult thing to do. Right now we have a proof of concept with one carrier and one API type, so location on Sprint. And we have a bunch of other carriers and proof of concepts that haven't been announced yet. And we have a lot of stuff in the pipeline, but fundamentally it's a very long road. So I have three calls to action for you. The first one is, if you have a third party API that, uh, that you think would bundle really nicely with the network API, Give it to Reg Schnodgrass. He's right there. Stand up, Reg. He's that guy back there. He doesn't look as scary in person. He's really nice. And he really wants your API. The second call to action is openapiservice.com is the website that we're currently building that is going to expose all this stuff. Uh, in a very untelco way, we're putting it up and telling people about it before it's done. And uh, it comes from my, my heritage as the open source guy. Like, I'm, I, I would rather get early feedback than keep things hidden and like, my gosh, you see what it's like ready and then let everybody have it. That's, that's dumb. And it makes a lot of people really nervous inside Telco, but we're doing it anyway. So go there, look at it. Be forgiving because it's brand new and uh, tell us what you think. And the third call to action is, if you have an idea for a network API that you want, I would love to hear about it. 
if your application could use a new API that is exposed from the network tomorrow, what would it be? I'm not thinking about SMS, MMS, call control, location, all that stuff that you can currently do. I'm thinking things that are unique to the network that no one's thought about, things that we can put into our product lines five years from now. So that's it. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate having you. Thanks, Ross. Uh, that was great. We have time, I believe, for a question or two. We got a question for Ross? Questions? Questions? I'm setting out the lights so I can see. There's no developers with a question. Everybody was too drunk last night. Hey, I was wondering how does this work for a machine to machine communication? Because that's the problem we have now is the cost basis of the network is too expensive for like, sensor networks. Yeah. And um, what you need to do is reduce your costs so we send data cheaper sensor to sensor machine to machine. Yeah, absolutely. That's something, that's, that's something we're definitely thinking about, right? I mean, the cost per call model does not work for machine to machine communication. We're hoping that the revenue share model works a little bit better. Um, it's It's got its own limitations, right? I mean, you have to be an entrepreneurial developer. You have to want to make money, right? Um, we have to figure out other business models for people who don't fall into that. But for people who are entrepreneurial in nature, um, it's, it's a lot more flexible, right? Because you can have, you know, uh, you can have a variety of sensor devices all making lots of calls, and it's, it's rev share instead of cost per call. So that's definitely something we're thinking about is opening up these APIs to a lot of a lot of new audiences that they wouldn't normally be open to. Yeah, I was wondering if does Alcatel know what you do, and if so, how do you convince them to still pay? <laughs> do they know what I do? As a matter of fact, uh, the CEO of the company told us last month. I've been there four months. I've met the CEO twice in an eighty thousand person company. They definitely know what we're doing. Uh, the CEO told us, I'm skeptical of your team because if you guys were doing what you need to be doing, people would be complaining a lot more about you. You're not shaking the boat enough, right? So they know that Alcatel Lucent is a certain type of company culture and it's a certain type of ecosystem culture and they want us to basically figure out how to change that culture, which is why they brought me in from SourceForge, they brought Laura in from Mastery, they brought Mike in from you know doing PR for open source agencies, they brought Reg in from an iPhone application, our entire team is all non telco people, and that's by design. Great, thanks, Ross. Thank